So I thought I'd do a quick tutorial on making clothes using the new version of ZBrush. I'm using ZBrush 2021.5 and we'll use some of the new tools that are available in that. Here I have a character that I sculpted that I um, haven't really done much of a body for, but it's going to be enough for the purposes of this tutorial to just try and uh, see what we can do. So the way I would approach this normally is I would duplicate the mesh that I'm working on straight away and I'll hide everything else by pressing shift on this eye icon that will hide everything except for this guy. You can see here he has five and a half million polygons, which is way too much. So I'm just going to bring this down to uh, something like this. This is more than enough, 85,000, 100,000, 200,000, anything like that. And I'm going to delete the higher and delete the lower. So we're stuck with this amount of polygons on this guy. So this is fine. Uh, I'm going to press control because we now need to paint this on. We could start painting this on. I have symmetry turned on. You can see we press X, the red dot will appear because we're looking at the front. So if I hold down control, we can paint this or with control held down, we can change the stroke type to lasso. And because symmetry is on, we can just kind of pull over one side and know that it's got to collect over the other side as well. And then we can clean this up by just holding control and changing back to our free hand and basically filling in the blanks here. So this kind of thing is perfect for what I want for this guy. You can see I'm not being very exact here. Don't really care if this is going to be a bit wobbly or not. What I don't want is clothes underneath this. So I am going to hold down control and alt to deselect that area down here. So that's now deselected. So this is his clothes as such. I'll press shift F so we can see what we're looking at. And I want to hit control W to make up a new poly group from that. Holding down control and shift will change to our select rect tool. So we can just click on this now and that will hide all the rest of his face and, and uh, body. And from here, we can go down to our geometry tab under modify topology and say delete hidden and they'll delete that so this is a little bit janky <laughs> a little bit edgy if we were to use the ziri mesh here and just try this with the default settings there's a good chance that the ziri mesh will maintain that and um, which is not something that we want so we want to kind of clean this up a little bit first and the easiest way to do that is to just go to edge loop and just hit group loops and that immediately cleans up some of those edges for you which is fine from here, zero mesh, I'm going to say, just give me a new one here. That starts to clean this up. I'll go half that amount of resolution again. And you'll see that this is getting smoother and smoother. I'll go half again, half again, and maybe even half again. This is the only amount of polygons that I actually need for this. So you can see from here, if I have to modify this with a move brush, BMV, there are so few polygons for me to move to actually smooth this out to get this the way that I look, uh, the way that I want it to look rather, um, that it's very easy to work with. I'll go down to display properties and turn on double so we can see the back as well. But basically this is what I want for my t-shirt. I can turn our main character back on again. I'll press shift to bring everything back. And because it's the exact same size as the guy, because we started from that, I'll go down to deformation and I'll just inflate this guy on both X, on X Y and Z axis. So that's now the basics of our t-shirt. If this is what we were going to use for our t-shirts, that's fine. We're almost done. We just basically go to dynamic subdivision, press that to see what it looks like. And you can see that it's smoothed that out nicely for us. So if we want to expand this or make this a little bit longer, we can hold down control and alt and just select these bottom vertices here. Press W to go into move mode, kind of move them down a little bit and make this a longer looking t-shirt than we had. Uh, and I'm just going to go back to our zero mesh this time rather than half and we're just going to say give me the same amount of polygons or even if you turn it off it'll kind of calculate where it is how many it has and if you hit zero mesh it'll just do a clean up job and make that longer for us so that's pretty much how we would go making our t-shirt if we did decide that hey i'd actually like to see this with some thickness you can see in the dynamic here that we can turn on thickness and that will actually give us some thickness to our t-shirt now it's only a preview that's all it is so i'm just going to turn it off for the moment uh, but let's say we wanted this to be a hooded character. So if we want this to be a hood, I'll press Shift F so we can see what we're looking at again. Press Q to go back into draw mode. What I'm going to do now is to, to create this hood, I'm just going to press BMV for a move brush and literally just grab all of this stuff here and just start moving it up. Absolutely no regard for topology or, or being clean or safe or um, anything like that. Just kind of pull it up. Uh, pull it out roughly in place something like this is fine 
you can see I've turned off uh, poly, poly framing there and you can see yeah it's literally that rough so from here we we'll go back to our zero measure and say recalculate this and it's going to do a nice job of cleaning this up so we can press shift now smooth that back down zero mesh again to clean this up and that's how easy it is to actually make a hood and um, we're literally just doing that uh, pressing shift to smooth stuff down and then letting zero mesh do the hard work of recalculating this out now you'll notice when i'm smoothing here it will smooth here but when i get to the edge the edge stays where it is and maybe i want to smooth this bit out because zero mesh respects this and will keep on giving me this so the way to do that is if you go to your brush menu uh, under the smooth brush modifiers at the bottom here if you press shift you'll see as you press shift you change to your smooth brush and you'll see that this min connected will will change and it's changing to three basically so if, as long as you have shift held down just change this back down to one and then that will allow you now to go back and smooth out open edges like this so with open edges smoothed we can just hit hit zero mesh again it will give us a nice clean piece of topology there so while this does look like a hood it's not actually sitting on the body like a hood um, and it was very easy to create uh, so we're going to use the dynamics now to actually make it look a little bit more like a hood so by default this is docked i think but if it isn't just go to your dynamics over here and click on this little icon in the corner and drag it over what we need to do is say that there are collision volumes in here so we have our hood selected so if we hit recalc it's going to look at every other object in here and calculate that as a collision volume the sample iterations by default is at 100 if we crank that up it's going to be more accurate and a little bit slower which is exactly what we want to do so we just do that gravity is turned on and we literally just hit run simulation and you'll see that that will now pull that hood down over this character now it did it uh, quite abruptly there i'm just going to undo that and I'll give it more simulations here and say run simulation again. So it gives us a little bit more time to actually see what's happening here. And every time I click either in the canvas or on the run simulation, it will start or stop that simulation. You'll see as well that it's bunching on the floor here. And um, so that's because floor collision is turned on. If we turn this off and we hit uh, run simulation, you can see that that will allow that to just kind of droop, uh, drape a little bit better. So this is our hood. Um, if I press D to turn on dynamic subdivision again, you can see it's not very hood like we may want to modify this a little bit so now we can take our cloth brushes so b c and let's take cloth nudge here for example cloth nudge will now have symmetry still turned on so i'm going to press x to turn that off and cloth nudge will basically treat it it will still respect this underlying surface but it will treat this as if it were cloth and allow us to nudge this cloth around on our character a little bit so you can see it's still respecting the underlying guy underneath but allowing us to nudge it uh, and still look like cloth we can press shift at any given stage if we don't like it and let it recalculate you know to smooth out and let it recalculate but basically we have this control over it we're basically nudging this cloth around on our character whatever way we want as we see fit if we wanted to take the whole lot we could press b t and change to transpose cloth ptc and that will allow us to kind of pick up the whole thing and move it around so we can if it was a windy day and you want to have blowing cloth you can just kind of move push it over um, or out the other way uh, you could rotate it if you wanted to sit down on the front a little bit more and if at any given stage you're saying you know this is fine but i actually kind of want this to be a little bit longer just go back to a normal move brush bmv we we'll pull this out just like this and again we'll hit the run simulation let it simulate again uh, and maybe pull it up again but now you can see that this is sitting across his face in a little bit more realistic fashion we go back to our cloth pull brush or cloth nudge brush and kind of push these over and it will always respect that underlying surface and allow us to create these cloth shapes underneath So obviously if you had a full body this would react that a little bit nicer but because you now have a combination of you know your old brushes move brushes which don't have cloth turned on or cloth brushes which will affect it if you find a shape you like just use one of the old move brushes to slightly correct wherever it's not working for you um, and work with that once you're happy we can turn on our thickness again here to see what that might look like uh, let's not go too thick 
and you can see the thickness is actually just a preview so that's going to show us what that would look like when with this level of, of thickness here I'm actually going to maybe cut off the front of this and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change back to our Z model brush BZM and if we hover over here you can see that there's an orange line that points in one direction so I'm hovering over a face I'll make sure QMesh is turned on and I'll actually I'll make sure delete is turned on and I'll change to a poly loop and I'm going to point upwards or downwards to delete everything along this this line here so I'll do that that's deleted that loop for me um, so now when we see thickness when we press D for uh, dynamic we'll see that this is what it looks like so now if I wanted to I could um, move this again using either a normal move brush BMV which will take this, but you'll see that it's grabbing both sides. BMT will change to a topological brush, which means that we can grab one side and pull it over the other, if that's what we're looking for. So we can now wrap this around them a little bit closer. You can almost sense the mystery about this guy, right? Yeah. And we press D again to see what that might look like. So BMT will only allow you to select one side of this, which is exactly what you're looking for. Now, this has dynamic subdivision on it. You can see it's very sharp around the edges here, more so than cloth would ever be. Um, so I'm going to turn this off for a second, the thickness, and show you two ways you could actually um, work with creating a thickness here that will actually give you control over those edges. So the first is if we just choose a Z modeler brush, BZM, shift F to see what we're looking at. And if we just hovered over a polygon and said Q mesh, Q mesh uh, polygroup all, it's going to take all of this polygroup and it's going to push it and give it some depth. Now you'll see where some of these overlap each other with this, there's a danger, especially on a really creased model, which this one doesn't happen to be. Let me just... Uh, make this a little bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this hood a lot bigger. I'm going to just grab a move brush, add some extra volume down here. We let our Ziri mesh do its magic to redistribute that weight around. So we have this kind of extra, uh, extra bit of hood here on the back. Just giving it lots of volume, Ziri mesh. And I'll go back here and I'll say, run the simulation again. It's going to run that simulation again. And if I press D to see what this looks like, it's still not quite what I want. So I'm going to use our cloth brushes, B, C, nudge. And I'm just going to basically uh, nudge some of this. Now you can see I still have a lot of volume on some of this. I want it to kind of intersect each other here a little bit. So say here, for example, I have some stuff that's intersecting, uh, which is fine. If that was the look of the cloth that I was going for, this, this is where the, the first one becomes a bit of an issue. Uh, the first method of making this. So you can see the way these are intersecting here. But you may not notice that when you're just looking at a very crinkled model here. So you could press B, Z, M, hover over a single polygon, uh, and with QMesh Polygroup all turned on, decide that you're going to just QMesh this and give this a thickness. And it might seem ideal that you can kind of control this thickness, but you can see up here, for example, QMesh will, QMesh will try and be clever and automatically add polygons or delete them. And that's the thing that can cause a problem here. This kind of thing can happen with this, especially on areas like this, where you see that it's now adding these together and welding points that it shouldn't be welding basically being more clever than you'd like. So if it's a very simple model, you could do, do this and you have total control over your thickness in your viewport, which is great. But if it's not, if it's potentially quite a, a convoluted mesh, you're actually better off going to edge loop, go to panel loops, turn your panel loops down to one, uh, your polish down to zero, your bevel down to zero. And depending on whether you want to push out or in or an average of the two on your model, uh, change your elevation and then hit panel loops here so you can see that now we've done this it's not going to have that problem where it intersects each other it's, it's literally just taking the geometry and pushed it out and it's not trying to be too clever 
So from here, we have something that looks a little bit more like cloth. It's maybe not quite thick enough, so I'll undo that, make it a little bit thicker. Yeah, something like this. But you can see when I press D that it gets too soft here. Um, so what I'm gonna do, because it's actually also given us polygroups, we start off with red, we have an orange dividing uh, line and a new interior. We can just go to our crease here and we can say crease those polygroups and it will automatically crease all along the edges. So the next time we turn on dynamic, you'll see we now have these really sharp edges. Now, they're too sharp. Uh, that's because of our crease level and our subdiv level. If I press down shift, we can see both of these at the same time. Our subdiv level, we can bring up to say four to make sure it's nice and smooth. But we want our crease level to be down at something like two. And the further away this is from the subdiv level, the softer that edge is gonna be. So that gives us a lot of control over what that might look like. So depending on what you're going for, I would just change that. So that's how you create hoods in the new version of ZBrush, um, or clothes in the new version of ZBrush. But you can see the power of this. Uh, you can always just smooth this stuff out and move it around. And now you can just sculpt on top um, as you see fit uh, with whatever extra brushes you have. So as usual, I hope this tip helps um, when you're creating your own cloth characters. Um, and as usual, please do consider subscribing. Thanks. Bye.